medial epicondyle fractures obviously are not as uh, common as uh, these two. They constitute about 10% of all pediatric elbow fractures. Another major difference is that they occur in the older age group, you know, the adolescent age group from 8 to 15, whereas supra, both supracondylar and lateral condyle, they tend to occur at a much earlier age. Now, uh, the mechanism of injury, there are three mechanisms. Direct trauma is very rare. Uh, more commonly, you get it, uh, it is an avulsion injury due to the fall on the outstretched hand, or it can occur in association with elbow dislocation. So during the ne uh, next uh, 10 minutes or so, these are the points which I shall touch upon. First, uh, let's discuss a few pitfalls, potential pitfalls in the diagnosis of medial epicondyle fracture. And the first scenario would, uh, that I would like to highlight is this one, where the fracture occurs in association with an elbow dislocation. And the first step over here is reduction of the elbow dislocation, which is done. But there are times when the surgeon may fail to notice that with the dislocation, the medial epicondyle fragment has got incarcerated into the joint. And if this is not picked up on time, this is not identified immediately, it can have serious consequences. So, uh, you know, neglected incarcerated medial epicondyle fracture can land up with stiffness and ulnar nerve palsy. So this scenario has to be kept in mind. The second scenario is the fracture occurring in a young child less than six to eight years old. And here you can have a fracture which resembles a medial epicondyle fracture. But remember that when a medial epicondyle fracture uh, is seen in a child less than six to eight years age, it is more commonly a much larger fragment. It is a medial condyle fracture. So it is an intra-articular fracture which needs to be then open, reduced and fixed. So these are the two you know, pitfalls in diagnosis which you should be aware of. Next, we come to assessment of fracture displacement. And when we discuss lateral condyle fractures, we saw that you know, the AP and lateral views don't give you an accurate assessment of fracture displacement. You require an internal oblique view. Similarly, in medial epicondyle fracture as well, it has been found that the AP and lateral views alone don't give you an accurate assessment of the displacement. This is because the fragment is displaced in an anterior direction. Therefore, you cannot make out the displacement on AP view and on the lateral view what happens is that the fragment is in, uh, super, superimposed on the distal end of the humerus and therefore you don't, can't make out the, uh, the displacement. So the accurate displacement can be made, made out only on CT scan. So is it necessary to do CT scan in every case? So the answer is no. It has been shown that the internal oblique view can give you a better assessment of fracture displacement than AP or lateral views. However, an even more specific view is what is known as the humeral axial view, which is done with the elbow in partial flexion and the X-ray uh, uh, beam uh, angled at around 25 degrees to the flexed elbow and this will give you an accurate assessment. Next we come to the comparative results, the comparison of results between conservative and operative treatment. So broadly speaking, medial epicondyle fractures, there are only two treatment modalities. Either you can treat it with a cast in situ or you have to do an open reduction internal fixation. But which is better? And there is confusion regarding the same. So if you look at this uh, uh, systematic review, which was published in 2020, we know that the bony union rates with conservative treatment are only 28% as against 96% for uh, uh, operative treatment. Out of those that go in for a non-union, almost 20% can have persistent, uh, with persistent non-union, may experience medial elbow pain, valgus instability, ulnar nerve symptoms, and restricted range. However, the conclusion that this systematic review draw, uh, drew was that the functional outcomes, even if it goes into a non-union, are mostly good, both for operative and non-operative treatment. And this is where the entire controversy lies. So having said that the only real absolute indication for operative treatment is a medial epicondyle fragment incarcerated into the joint. So this is the only real uh, absolute indication for surgery. All others are relative indications and it, these include elbow dislocation or instability, displacement more than five millimeter and throwing a uh, fracture in a throwing arm or a weight, weight bearing limb. Uh, in this, in these scenarios, the surgeon may tend towards opting for surgical treatment, but they, there is no real evidence supporting the same. 
Now we come to a few surgical tips and tricks. So surgery for medial epicondyle orif has traditionally been described in the supine position. We mostly do it in the supine position, but there are a few surgeons who have proposed doing it in the prone position. The proponents of this prone position surgery, they say that when you position in the supine, you have to rotate your arm externally, which places valgus stress on the elbow and therefore the reduction of your medial epicondyle fragment may become difficult. On the other hand, when you do it in the prone position, you rotate your arm internally, which places varus stress on the elbow and reduction becomes easier. There have been comparative studies of the results of supine versus prone position. So in prone position, the positioning time is longer. However, the surgical time per se is shorter. And this survey found that no surgeon who had tried the prone position had gone back to the supine position. Having said that, there is no real difference in terms of surgical outcome and reduction quality. So this is what the literature says. We I will just describe the few steps of the conventional supine position technique that we do. So here the arm is placed on the side arm table with the arm externally rotated and the medial incision is taken. The ulnar nerve is isolated and retracted. There are a few tips which you can adopt for easy reduction of the fracture fragment. So you can tie an s march bandage from distal to proximal so that the flexor muscles, they are squeezed and the medial epicondyle is drawn more towards the fracture bed. The other reduction tips that you have to do, so you have to pronate the forearm and flex the wrist. This relaxes your common flexor origin and makes your reduction easier. You can use a dental pick hook the medial epicondyle fragment and push it towards the, uh, towards the fracture bed so that you can then fix it in its position. And in certain cases, you can do a superficial facial release of the common flexor origin in order to facilitate your reduction. How do you fix the fracture? So various modalities have been uh, described. Most commonly, we use the uh, single 4 mm cannulated cancellous screw, screw over washer. Now this need not be bicortical, this can be a unicortical screw which gives a good hold. Alternatively, you can use K-wires and some surgeons have also described the use of suture anchors. Regarding uh, 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 fracture medial epicondyle with incarceration in the joint, this technique has recently been described in J. Posna 2022. So what it consists of is you supinate the forearm, the fingers and wrist are extended, the elbow is flexed 45 degrees and the elbow is then gently flex, uh, flex uh, shaped back and forth in a varus valgus direction and this may help to uh, you know reduce the fragment i have not had an opportunity to do this maneuver but uh, if you get an opportunity you can refer to this article and do it complications so non union which can occur more often with uh, conservative than operative treatment. But as I mentioned earlier, even if it goes into non-union, the results, the functional results may be uh, good. Uh, you can have pain valgus instability. You can have stiffness, loss of range of motion, and ulnar nerve symptoms. So to conclude, in medial epicondyle fractures, displacement is better assessed on internal oblique and humeral axial view. Both non-operative and operative management can give functional good functional results. However, in cases with instability and cases uh, children with high functional demands, you may opt for surgical treatment. So uh, that's about it. Thank you.